Hi, my name is Ashish Dugar. I'm the Vice President of Global Medical Affairs at Sarepta Therapeutics. Uh, thank you to PPMD for inviting me to participate in this webinar. And thanks to all of you for, uh, for joining Sarepta this afternoon and taking time out of your busy lives during what I'm sure is a really stressful time uh, for families. I'm really pleased to give you an update on Sarepta's pipeline in Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And today I'll be focusing on the exon skipping therapies we are developing. We hope this is informative for you. Please take a moment to, to look at our forward-looking statements on our webcast. Today we'll be speaking about our goals for the future, and there is risk and uncertainty associated with speaking about the future. In Therapia, we have an unwavering commitment to science and patients, specifically to develop life-changing precision genetic medicine to treat 100% of individuals with Duchenne. Now, while our conversation today is about our work towards that goal, I'd like to take a moment to say that we do recognize the profound impact that COVID-19 has had on the Duchenne community. And we want to reassure you that during these difficult times, our, our mission remains focused and undeterred. We remain committed to you and committed to advancing our therapies with the same drive as ever. Sarepta's experience in Duchenne runs deep over the past decade, learning about the disease and, and what is most important to patients, physicians, regulators, and payers. And in recent years, the breadth of our pipeline has become unparalleled, spanning across three distinct approaches. On the left, our RNA platform, which includes our PMO and PPMO technologies. You may also know this as exon skipping. And we also have gene therapy and gene editing platforms, which will be covered in another talk by Dr. Teji Singh and will be available from the on-demand video library. In total, we have 20 Duchenne programs in our pipeline. Now, as many of you know, research and development occurs along a continuum. The beginning stages of R&D include research and proof of concept tests, which may progress to testing in animal studies and potentially continue to early stage clinical research with participants to characterize safety and gain an early understanding of the treatment effect. Now, if the early clinical work supports continued development, programs may move to late stage clinical studies, which are typically larger and focus on understanding safety and efficacy of the therapeutic agent. Now, if successful, a product may be approved by a regulatory body and gain marketing authorization. Now, it's important to note that this continuum doesn't stop at approval. There are many, there are different decision makers for approving a therapy, the FDA uh, here in the US, and then the decision makers who ultimately enable access to a therapy, the payers or insurers. And as you know, there's no single payer in the US. There are state Medicaid agencies and many private insurers. And sometimes these decision makers want different things. So we need to plan our programs to satisfy multiple goals and stakeholders. Therefore, we have to continue evidence generation even beyond regulatory approval. And this is especially true with the accelerated approval pathway, which requires post-approval confirmatory studies where both regulators and payers are interested in understanding the longer term benefits and risks of our therapies. We also continue to understand the long-term impact of our therapies through real world data collection, such as post-marketing registries. Today, we'll speak specifically about our exon skipping programs, uh, PMO and PPMO. So starting with our RNA targeted therapy, uh, targeted therapy platform, specifically the, the PMO program. Um, as you know, Duchenne is caused by an error in the gene that encodes for the structural protein called dystrophin. Now this error or mutation results in little to no dystrophin being produced. And dystrophin is important because it acts as a sort of shock absorber for our muscles, protecting them when we move so they don't degenerate. Our RNA platform is based on the PMO chemistry. PMO stands for phosphorodiaminate morpholino oligomer. And our PMO chemistry allows us to literally edit at the RNA level to ultimately restore production of the dystrophin protein that would otherwise be missing and is the root cause of the disease. Our PMO exon skipping platform is designed to direct the body to make a shortened form of the dystrophin protein. And the graphic below will probably help to illustrate this better than I'm explaining it. So 
First of all, the graphic below shows a small piece of the dystrophin gene, exons 46 to 56. Uh, a mutation in the dystrophin gene, such as deletion of exon 50, where you can see in the white, uh, the white uh, chevron, could disrupt what's called the reading frame. And the cell's machinery won't be able to read the gene and produce the needed dystrophin. So this is illustrated by the car, unable to drive past the exon 50 deletion. Now the goal of exon skipping is to restore that reading frame by skipping over an exon near the deletion. In this example, a PMO is designed to target exon 51, basically masking it and allowing for, exon, for skipping of this particular exon. So skipping this exon allows the car to continue driving past the region where the deletion occurred and allows for production of a shortened form of the protein. So the next slide shows our three PMO programs. And these three PMO programs are either approved or in clinical trials. At Teplerson, the first one on your left, is a PMO designed to skip exon 51. This was the first therapy approved in the US in 2016 to treat Duchenne and is intended to treat about 13% of the Duchenne population. Goladursen here in the middle is a PMO designed to skip exon 53 and was approved in the US in December of 2019. And this PMO addresses approximately another 8% of individuals with Duchenne. Casimersen is a PMO designed to skip exon 45 and we're in the process of submitting a new drug application or an NDA to the FDA for their review and potential approval. We plan to complete this application very soon. These three programs have utilized, or in the case of Casimersen, intend to utilize the accelerated approval pathway, which enables approval based on a surrogate endpoint, in this case, dystrophin production. If we're successful, we'll have three RNA therapies available in the US next year, predicted to serve up to 30% of the Duchenne community. Now, once a drug is approved, real world data may be collected through a mechanism such as a registries or electronic health records. Real world data may be important for a variety of reasons, including obtaining high quality clinical effectiveness and safety data in a real world setting. Overall, real world data collection is different from participation in a clinical trial. Now, Sarepta has a PMO registry that collects real world data from individuals with Duchenne who are receiving a Teplersen or a Goladersen outside of a clinical trial. And this work is in partnership with PPMD. The data collected are generated during patients' routine clinical care, their routine visits to the physician. And patients who are interested will only need to provide an informed consent form. There are no additional clinical visits and there are no additional tests. And if you're interested in learning more about the PMO registry, please email clinicaltrials at srepta.com. Please note that Daisy Day will be giving a presentation on the registry program, which can be accessed through the PPMD on-demand video library. Now, as I mentioned previously, we're currently in the process of submitting an NDA to the FDA for Casimersen, which is designed to skip Exxon 45. This slide describes Casimersen's clinical development program, which includes study 101 on your left and early stage study. This study involved participants who were seven to 21 years of age and who were non-ambulatory or had limited ambulation. The study is now complete. In addition, we currently have an ongoing global late stage trial called ESSENCE that involves the study of both Goladersen and Casimersen. In the US, ESSENCE is ongoing but is no longer enrolling. And we have study 302, which is an open label study enrolling Goladersen or Casimersen patients. Here, I'm quickly showing the study schematic for the early stage Casimersen trial 4045-101. The study was composed of two parts. First, a double-blind placebo-controlled dose titration period of about 12 weeks. And the second part was an open-label extension period where all participants received Casimersen at 30 milligrams per kilogram per week. Importantly, this study did not include a biopsy. So no dystrophin expression data is available from this study. As I said, study 101 is now complete and we'd like to share some safety data with you. 
As you can see here on the slide, all patients reported at least one adverse event after beginning treatment. Most were mild in severity. No patients discontinued or experienced a decreased dose due to an adverse event. Procedural pain and nasopharyngitis were the most commonly reported adverse events. And treatment-related adverse events included one case of moderate iron deficiency one case, and one case of mild flushing in two patients, and mild contact dermatitis in one patient who received placebo. It's important to note that the casimersin related adverse events resolved during the study period, and the placebo-related adverse event was, on, was still ongoing at the end of the study. Now, five serious adverse events occurred in patients receiving casimersin during the combined treatment periods, and they're listed here. All five events were considered not related to treatment, and all five events resolved during the study and did not recur with further dosing. And finally, no clinically significant laboratory abnormalities or worsening in ECGs and echocardiograms were noted. Now I'll talk about the casimersin late stage trial. As a reminder, the ESSEN study is ongoing but not recruiting in the US. Recruiting for this study does continue outside of the US. Essence is a late stage trial that includes arms for both casimersin and golidersin. And Essence is a 96 week double blind placebo controlled study. And this will be followed by an open label extension period in which all patients will receive open label active treatment for 48 weeks. All participants will undergo a muscle biopsy at baseline and a second muscle biopsy at either week 48 or 96. And we're also collecting functional endpoints, which you can see here on the right-hand side of the slide. So here we show data from an interim analysis in the ESSEN study. On the left, we show the quantification of the dystrophin protein using a method called Western blot. The mean percent normal dystrophin was 0.925% at baseline. After 48 weeks of treatment, the mean percent normal dystrophin significantly increased to 1.736%. So what we saw was that there was a statistically significant difference in the mean change from baseline to week 48 in dystrophin protein between the casimersin arm and the placebo arm. And of the 22 patients that received casimersin, all showed an increase in skipping exon 45 over their baseline levels. And this represents a 100% response rate. Importantly, there was a statistically significant positive correlation between exon 45 skipping and dystrophin production. And as I mentioned previously, this study is ongoing and remains blinded to collect additional efficacy and safety data. Now on this slide, we show the ongoing exon skipping trials in the US. And in the interest of time, I won't go into all of the details. Uh, many of the details are listed on this slide, and there's also additional information on each trial on clinicaltrials.gov. You can also search by the NCT identifying number, or you can simply type in Sarepta in the search bar of the clinicaltrials.gov homepage. And I would also encourage you to speak to your physician if you're interested. Briefly, Essence and Mission on the far right utilize our PMO platform. And we've just talked about the Essence study. Mission is our post-approval confirmatory study to satisfy our accelerated approval requirement for a Teplerson. And now that's our Exxon 51 skipping therapy. And it is looking at a high dose of a Teplerson compared to the approved dose of 30 milligrams per kilogram. And the momentum, the momentum trial on the left utilizes our PPMO platform. And I'll go into more details regarding our PPMO clinical program in the next few slides. So PPMO is our next generation technology. The, the PMO's limitation is that it's neutrally charged and only gets into the cells passively, which is limiting. So this presented an opportunity to build upon our PMO approach and develop what are called peptide conjugated PMOs, otherwise known as our PPMO. The extra P is for peptide. The PPMO intends to solve for the PMO's limitation in cell penetration by using a positively charged peptide attached to the PMO to help actively drag more of the therapy into the cells. And that's what's happening in animal models. More of the PPMO gets into the muscle cells. It creates more exon skipping and more dystrophin. 
We've also seen in animal studies the ability for the PPMO to get into key muscles like the heart. Now, as we study the PPMO in human trials, we'll gain insights on safety and dosing with a goal of producing higher levels of dystrophin and enabling more efficient dosing for patients, such as monthly versus the weekly PMO regimen. Now, our first investigational PPMO product called SRP5051 is designed to skip Exxon 51 and is being evaluated in clinical trials using a monthly dosing regimen. We've completed the first in human trial that you can see here on your left. It's a single age sending dose study, which looked at patients receiving single doses. Participants had the option to enroll into an open label extension. Recruitment is currently open in the US for the multiple age sending dose study where patients receive multiple doses with each group receiving a higher dose than the last. The goal of our multi-ascending dose study is to evaluate whether we are able to safely reach high doses of the PMO. And at the end of the study, patients can enroll into the open label extension study. Again, if we're able to safely achieve therapeutic doses with this technology, our preclinical models suggest that PPMO could potentially be a significant advancement that improves upon the ability of the PMO to get into the cells and thereby produce even more dystrophin. The trial includes individuals who are ambulatory or non-ambulatory ages 4 to 21, so it is quite inclusive. And these patients should be amenable to Exxon 51 skipping. Again, we encourage you to visit clinicaltrials.gov to learn more and speak with your physician if you're interested. So these are the three trials that we just, we just discussed. Once again, please ask your physician if you're interested, and you can also visit clinicaltrials at surrupted.com if you have questions. In this last section, I want to describe some resources that we have for patients and families. Surrupt Assist is our patient support program designed to provide patients with information to help them navigate the process of starting and staying on therapy. Please contact Surrupt Assist if you have questions about approved Surrupt therapies. And please note that Dan Madden will be giving a presentation on this program, which can be accessed through the PPMD on-demand video library. In addition, you'll find contact information for different teams at Sarepta who are available to answer your questions and hear your concerns, COVID-related or not COVID-related. Sarepta Assist is available for people in the U.S. taking an approved Sarepta therapy, and the number is 1-888-SAREPTA. If you are participating in a clinical trial and have questions, please call your clinical trial site. The Sarepta team is also available to help you navigate disruptions in your trial participation and their contact information is also listed here. And for other questions, you may reach out to our patient affairs team at advocacy at Sarepta.com. I promise these are real life people at the other end of the emails and they will respond. So finally, I wanna thank PPMD for the opportunity to speak with you today. And thank you to the many patients and families for your commitment and dedication to participating in our trials and in the journey to find treatments for Duchenne. Thank you so much.